Sure, yeah, we will have a narrative thread uh, going all throughout Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, really, the events early on in the game is um, this giant rift in the sky opens up. The Fade, um, or sorry, the Veil, which is the barrier between the Fade and the real world, is ripped open. These demons start pouring out. And all these different organizations that normally would step in and try to fight it or do something are all suspiciously uh, very otherwise occupied, uh, fighting each other, fighting amongst themselves. And so um, as the Inquisitor, your role is to build your Inquisition and uncover the truth behind what's happening in the game. So there will be a linear thread throughout it, but then there's also lots of opportunity to go off of that, um, that narrative thread and go off an adventure and, and kind of find your own story. In the, the general sense for the Dragon Age franchise, you are still the hero, you're the ultimate hero, you're saving the world as you do throughout them and through, actually through other Bioware games too, I guess Mass Effect has the, the same theme on that one. I don't know if there's anything on it. Yeah, so I think with all the games, uh, the writers have some very specific themes in mind that they want to explore with the story. So um, for Dragon Age 2, it was the mages versus Templars, and it's kind of this freedom versus security is a theme that they wanted to explore. Or in Mass Effect 3, they were looking at um, order versus chaos, and which is better, and um, you know humanity versus kind of machines. Uh, so there will be some strong themes in Dragon Age Inquisition. We can't really go into the details right now, but um, in the future we do hope to tell more about the themes of that game. That's a, we know that's a really important one for the fans. We know that past decisions uh, are really, really a big thing in our games, and they're important to us too. And so it is something that you will be able to import into Dragon Age Inquisition. Your past choices do matter. Uh, we can't reveal right now exactly how that's going to work, but because we're now across uh, five platforms with the, the new generations, we had to work out something that uh, enabled people, if they were going to be using their saves from their Xbox 360 and now they're on an Xbox One, we needed a way to transfer that. So we've been working on something that will allow people okay. to do that. Yes. And we do want players to feel free to jump straight into Inquisition without having played the previous games. Uh, it is a new story, new characters, and uh, if you have played the previous games, then those decisions will have an impact on uh, some of the things in the world uh, of Thetis in Dragon Age Inquisition, but uh, you are able to just jump straight in. <laughs> one, of, one of the big things for Dragon Age Inquisition is we do want to answer a lot of questions that fans had about both Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. So you will see returning characters like Varric and Cassandra and Morgan, and they will have more in the backstory and closing the loop that you may be wondering about, but we can't go into too much detail right now about what those are. But for those returning characters, we would like them to react to anything that you've done as a player in the previous games if you did play them. So um, we might hear Varric talk about some of his motivations in Inquisition based on what happened in Dragon Age 2. That's it. That's one that's come up before too. That's something that people really want to know if the Mubari are coming back. Yeah, I really love to talk. Yeah. About. So we can't go into uh, which followers are coming back if you're asking if it's going to be a follower or not. Uh, we can't get into specifics about that. But there will be animals in the game. We actually have a video we can show you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're trying to do a lot just making the world feel alive with lots of ambient creatures, uh, living wildlife, just kind of running around doing their own thing so that it feels like even if you're not there to see it, uh, lots of cool things are happening in the world around you. So Mike Laidlaw, uh, the uh, lead designer on Dragon Age Inquisition, has said that we won't have the origin stories like we did in Dragon Age Origins. We wanted to leave those for that game. But um, when you choose your race and your character, they will have some story that comes along with that choice and characters in the world will react differently to you based on whether you're a dwarf, an elf, or a human, and uh, your class and a lot of those things that you as a player are able to choose for your character. Uh, that's a really good question. Do you want to talk to that? Yeah, we're, we're kind of, we can't go into specifics about that one necessarily either, but we are looking into 
uh, how we can do the voiceover for the player character. We have to take a lot of things into consideration, even just the size of uh, how many voiceover files that would be because our games have so much dialogue. It would end up being eight different voices if we did a voiceover for each one. So the size that would take up on the disc is something that we would have to consider as well. So we are looking into ways to do that, but we're not entirely sure yet how it's going to happen. So we can't confirm anything right now. At this point, we have confirmed that we will have a player voice for uh, male and female. Um, but that's all we've been able to talk about at this point. Yes, absolutely. The, uh, all of our games are localized uh, within, not within the BioWare studio, but we do work closely with our Madrid studio, who does all of our localization, and we have a localization team in our BioWare studio that keeps contact with them. So we do have influence over what happens, and we know that that was a, that was a big thing for Dragon Age 2. So there's actually a new layer of quality assurance that goes into the voiceover testing to make sure that doesn't happen. but. When things are kind of happening last minute and if a character changes suddenly from a male to a female but the script's already been printed, that's kind of when those things happen. So we do have this new layer of quality assurance that will hopefully catch that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, I even tweeted that I was surprised that they showed so much of the concept <laughs> art because there's a lot of really good stuff in the concept art there. Uh, so clever players can kind of look at it and try to extract a little bit of information. Um, and I'd love to see them um, talk about what they think it could be. But unfortunately, uh, we can't really go into too much detail about other characters that will be in the game, uh, whether they be uh, characters you encounter on your journeys or if they're uh, playable characters in the uh, player party. Um, so we'll have to let that sit out there and uh, let people come up with their ideas. And, and we do hope to reveal some more information about uh, followers and players and characters in the game. So. Uh, there's actually that's a good question, and there's actually a couple things that could prevent the player from accessing content. Um, and I wouldn't say it would prevent you, but might might make you think twice about trying to go in. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we've talked about with combat is it's not auto scaling on a lot of the creatures in the game. So there will be cases where you could run into a creature that's way stronger than you, and it'll just um, it'll beat you up pretty good, and then you'll realize, okay, I need some better armor, I need better weapons, uh, I need to, uh, you know, increase the power of my Inquisition, and so you'll go back and, and do some things to level up and get stronger. Uh, and alternatively, you could also run into characters that are much weaker than you and are e an easy fight. So there are some things that might, um, you know, make you think about uh, waiting to go and access certain content. Uh, but then, in terms of uh, levels and areas and stuff, there is, uh, like I said with the linear narrative, um, there are points where you'll have to build your Inquisition up to a certain amount of power before you can move forward with the story, and you can do that by um, doing quests, um, um, you know, killing monsters or creatures or uh, finding treasure, exploring, things like that. Um, so that could be something that would uh, you'd have to do before you move forward, and uh, uh, as well as areas as well. Um, and this may, I don't know if this is a question you're asking, but um, we will have a lot of very big areas, but we'll use the world map to um, move between those giant areas. No, I haven't seen the Crescent Assassin's Creed yeah, stuff, no, um, I so I'm not able to comment on that. But um, uh, they did talk about um, trying to take a fortress and using the power of your Inquisition to do so. Uh, and so in a lot of cases, you'll have the forces that will do a lot of the work for you to burst the door down and, and take care of uh, a lot of the enemies um, while you go in and, and do um, you know, the most important stuff in that mission. Uh, so they kind of clear the way for you in a sense. It was, it was definitely difficult because it's something that our team put a lot of work into and you're working late hours and you're not seeing your family or friends so it, uh, it does hurt when those things come back but we, we love that our fans are that passionate that they, that they want to give us that feedback that it means that much to them so we do understand that and we love that part of it and it, it does influence when we get uh, major feedback if a lot of people are saying the same thing it, it does come into the next game and we think okay well the fans are really asking for this and that's why things like Morrigan appear in Dragon Age Inquisition because we know that fans want a story loop close like that. Yeah, and I say it was, you know, uh, to some degree we were a little surprised that it was so polarizing, but what that allowed us to do was look at the things that people really loved 
about Dragon Age 2 and the things that people um, you know, wish had been more like Dragon Age Origins or thought could be better in a different way. And so moving forward with new technology on Frostbite 3 and Dragon Age Inquisition, we were able to take a look at all that feedback and, and really try to take the best of both worlds so that uh, when looking at the combat or the story or the other elements of gameplay, we could try to address fans' feedback and give them the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm.